Consider the polar equation r equals 10 sine theta. Our goal is to calculate the surface area where the angle theta is bounded from 0 to pi over 2 and the graph is rotated about the line theta equals pi over 2. So how can we find the surface area of the solid that's generated when we rotate the curve about the line theta equals pi over 2? First, let's draw the polar graph. Sine theta is basically a circle along the y-axis. Now, r is 10, which means that the diameter of the circle is 10 units long. And therefore, the radius of the circle is half of the diameter, which is 5. Now, this particular circle is bounded by theta equals 0 to pi over 2. So here is theta equals 0. And this is theta equals pi over 2. So we're really, we only have the right side of the graph. However, when we rotate it about the line theta equals pi over 2, we're going to get a sphere about that same line. And so we need to find a surface area of a sphere. The surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. So this is going to be 4 pi times 5 squared. And 5 squared is 25. 4 times 25 is 100. So the surface area of this object is going to be 100 pi square units. So let's use calculus to confirm this answer. Now let's start with the formula. The surface area is going to be 2 pi r times the integral from alpha to beta of cosine theta times the square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. Now this equation, it applies whenever you're rotating the polar curve about the line theta equals pi over 2. If you wish to rotate it about the polar axis or the line theta equal 0, everything will be the same but instead of cosine you're going to have sine. And I'm going to do an example of that after this problem. So we have r. We can see that r is 10 sine theta. Now, alpha and beta. Alpha is 0, beta is pi over 2. So we're going to integrate it from 0 to pi over 2. And then we have cosine theta times the square root of r squared. So r is still 10 sine theta, but this time we're going to square it. And then dr d theta. So dr d theta is the derivative of r with respect to theta. And r is 10 sine theta. And the derivative of that is 10 cosine theta. So dr d theta is 10 cosine theta. And then I ran out of space to write d theta. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression. So right now I'm going to write 10 pi in front of the integral. And then I have 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. Ten sine theta squared, that's going to be 100 sine squared theta, and plus we're going to have 100 cosine squared theta. Now, 2 sine theta cosine theta, what do you know about that? That formula is related to the double angle of sine. Sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cosine theta. So let's replace that expression with sine 2 theta. So we're going to have 10 pi integral from 0 to pi over 2 
sine 2 theta. And then we're going to factor out 100. And so we're going to have 100 sine squared plus cosine squared. What do you know about sine squared plus cosine squared theta? That's another Pythagorean identity. And that's equal to 1. So we're going to have sine 2 theta times the square root of 100 times 1, which is 100, and then d theta. The square root of 100 is 10. And I'm going to combine that with the 10 pi in front. So 10 pi times 10 is 100 pi. Now at this point, we can integrate sine 2 theta from alpha to beta. The antiderivative of sine 2 theta, that's going to be negative cosine 2 theta divided by 2. And so now I have 100 pi divided by 2, so that's 50 pi. And there's a negative sign in front of that. So it's negative 50 pi times cosine 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. So now let's plug in pi over 2. So we have cosine 2 theta or cosine 2 times pi over 2. And then this is going to be minus cosine 2 times 0. So 2 times pi over 2, that's going to be pi. So we have cosine pi and 2 times 0 is 0, so minus cosine 0. Cosine pi is negative 1. Cosine 0 is positive 1. And so negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And negative 50 times negative 2 is positive 100. So the surface area is positive 100 pi, which is the same answer that we had in the beginning. Now let's try our second example. Let's say that r is 8 cosine theta. And the angle will vary between 0 and pi over 2. So this time, we're going to rotate it about the polar axis, which is the same as the line where theta equals 0 degrees. Now, a cosine theta, that's going to be a circle along the x-axis or in this case, the polar axis. So this is the polar axis, where theta equals 0 degrees. So this is theta equals 0, and this is theta equals pi over 2. So our graph is bounded by this region. And when we rotate it about the polar axis, we're going to get a sphere that looks like this, highlighted in blue. And so once again, we can calculate the surface area using this equation. It's 4 pi r squared. So r, I mean the diameter is equal to 8 based on what we see here. If you graph it at this point, it's going to be 8 units away from the origin. So the radius is half of 8. So capital R is 4 units long. Therefore, the surface area is going to be 4 pi times 4 squared. 4 squared is 16, and 4 pi times 16 is 64 pi. So the surface area of the sphere is 64 pi square units. Let's use calculus to get that same answer. So this time, the formula is going to be 2 pi r integral from alpha to beta sine theta as opposed to cosine theta and then we have the square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta so you can use this formula if it's being rotated about the polar axis so instead of having cosine here 
we now have sine. R is 8 cosine theta. And just like before, alpha is 0, beta is pi over 2. So we're going to integrate it from 0 to pi over 2. R squared is going to be 8 cosine theta squared. And dr d theta, that's the derivative of 8 cosine theta, which is negative 8 sine theta. Now, just like before, I'm going to write 8 pi in front of the integral. And then I'm going to have 2 sine theta cosine theta left over. times the square root of 64 cosine squared plus positive 64 sine squared. Now let's replace 2 sine theta with sine 2 theta based on the double angle formula. And so we're going to have the surface area is 8 pi times the square root from 0 to pi over 2 sine 2 theta and then inside the square root let's take out or factor out the GCF which is 64 and so we're gonna be left with cosine squared plus sine squared and just like in the last problem sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 and so we're gonna have the square root of 64 which is 8 and then 8 times 8, that's 64. So we have 64 pi times a definite integral of sine 2 theta d theta. Now the antiderivative of sine 2 theta, we know it's negative cosine 2 theta divided by 2. So we have 64 divided by 2, which is 32 pi. And we have a negative sign, so let's put that in the front. And then it's cosine 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. Now, 2 times pi over 2 that's going to be pi and cosine pi is negative 1 and cosine 0 is positive 1 so this is going to be negative 32 pi times negative 2 which is positive 64 pi and so we're going to get the same answer as we did before using the formula surface area is equal to 4 pi r squared